hotel has become the crime scene of Mali's bloodiest terrorist attack. Two gunmen opened a suitcase full of automatic weapons, then entered the hotel and shot anyone who stood in their way. Many were able to run away for their lives, but the attack left a trail of death and wounded. Ibrahim's shop is next to the hotel. He saw the carnage unfolding before his eyes. It was really bad. It is inexplicable. We were lucky to make it alive because they really intended to hurt people. I have no words to qualify this. If there had been more than two attackers, it would have been really terrible. As of Sunday, two groups had claimed the responsibility, the Al-Qaeda-linked group Al-Murabitun and the Messina Liberation Front, a jihadist group from central Mali. Mali is in a 10-day state of emergency. That means that people do not have the right of assembly and police has more powers to arrest and interrogate people. But it's not alone in its fight. The UN mission in Mali has dedicated about 40 security personnel and experts to assist the Malian security forces in their investigation. The Malian president received his Senegalese counterpart and president of the Economic Community of West African Countries. To them, this attack has changed West Africa forever. We took measures to facilitate the circulation of people and goods in the region. Unfortunately, now we will be reviewing these measures. No country should consider that they are safe from these attacks, especially today. There is a philosophy of death that is unfortunately spreading rapidly through the internet and indoctrinating people. On Monday, Mali will begin three days of mourning in remembrance of the victims of the attack. But their fight against terrorism may take much longer. Yusuf Geji, CCTV, Bamako.